Good morning. This is our regular Sunday school lesson from First Baptist Church, Denby. This is April 18th, 2021. And our topic today is Nehemiah, the captive cup barrier rebuilds a nation. Repeating that, Nehemiah, the captive cup barrier rebuilds a nation. What I'm going to do, I'm going to read the scripture and then I'm going to follow that with prayer give you a little bit of a background, and then I'll give you the highlights of this lesson. So if you do not have a Bible, you might want to get one because what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to begin reading the focal verses, the verses that we will be dealing with. It's coming from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verses 11 through 20. We begin. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I rose in the night, I and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode, on, rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Verse 14, then I went to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then I went up in the night by the brook, and I viewed the wall, and I turned back, and I entered by the gate of the valley, and so returned. And the rulers knew not whether I went or what I did. Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. And then I said unto them, You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. And then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Verse 19. But when Samalot, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant, the Ammonite, and Gershom, the Arabian, heard it, they laughed us to scorn, and they despised us and said, What is this thing you do? Will you rebel against the king? And then answered I to them and said to them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will rise and build, but ye have no potion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. May God bless the reading of the word. Let us have a prayer. God, we come to you today asking you to help us with this lesson. We pray that we will make ourselves understandable to it. We pray for those who are listening that they will receive this lesson with clarity and use this lesson to grow. We pray that someone will be saved as a result of this lesson. Now we will begin with our objectives. What we're going to do in the book of Nehemiah chapter 2, we're going to examine verses 11 to 20, we're going to examine why Nehemiah decided to restore the wall of Jerusalem and reform the Sabbath law. Then we're going to leave appreciating Nehemiah's feelings and behavior in restoring the wall and reforming Jewish worship. 
And finally, this is something that you should do. You should identify ways to restore worn parts of the faith community and revive traditions that honor God. As you saw at the beginning of our lesson on the screen, that we have three parts of the lesson that we will cover from nearby chapter two, verses 11 through 20. The first thing we will cover is survey the situation. That's verses 11 to 15. Then secondly, we will call the people to work, verses 16 through 18. And then we will respond to opposition. And that's our last verses. But before we begin with the explanation of those verses, I thought it would be wise that we look at some background. Well, first, I want you to know that the book of Nehemiah was compiled by the Chronicle, and a Chronicle is just an unknown historian. He found Nehemiah's records in the temple archives. Nehemiah, another thing is Nehemiah's name means God was consoled, and he was born in exile, which began when Babylonia conquered Jerusalem in 587 BC. He grew up in the faith of his father and he loved, he loved Israel. Some persons say that he was probably a eunuch because there is no mention of wives. There were no wives mentioned. Nehemiah, when he was placed in exile, he had an honorable position. He was a cup barrier for the king out of the sexes of Persia. Now, a cup barrier to the king is more than just serving him wine, or even it's more than him acting as a butler. The king trusted him and confided in him. What a great position for a Jewish person in exile. Of course, God had a hand in placing Nehemiah in this official position in the Persian government. Nehemiah became an instrument by which Judah could gain restoration. God's hand was in it. God used Nehemiah as a tool for God's purpose. Yes, he did. Now, it is good to know that there had been two waves of returning exiles from the Babylonian, from Babylonia to Judah. Nehemiah happened to be included in the third wave, which hadn't happened yet. So he was still in exile. It is also good for us to know that in Nehemiah chapter one, a few points. King Artaxerxes of Persia had gone to the city of Susa. And this was a renter, a winter resident of Persian king. Of course, Nehemiah had to go with him. So when the brother of Nehemiah, Hananiah, nah, he came with some men from Judah and Nehemiah asked him, how are things at home? How, how is everything going? Boy, they gave Nehemiah some discouraging news about the deplorable condition. This is what they said. The wall and the gates were crumbling. The people were vulnerable to an attack. And also the temple was in ruins. There was no political leadership. No one was available to motivate them to build. Nehemiah began to weep, he began to pray, he began to fast, and he knew, he knew he had to do something about it. So the king, when he would serve, when he was serving the king, he noticed how Nehemiah was looking. And so the king asked him, what is wrong, Nehemiah? And Nehemiah finally told the king about Judah, and he asked the king for permission to go to Jerusalem, to his country, and to help the people rebuild the wall and the city. And believe it or not, 
the king gave him permission to do that and they gave him a full military escort and letters to give to the governor so that he could have a safe passage. You remember I said, God had a hand in this. That's why Nehemiah was put into this position by the hand of God. So when Nehemiah proceeded on his journey to Jerusalem and he arrived at the west of the Euphrates, he gave the governors the letter from the king of Persia. However, in verse in, uh, chapter 2, verse 10, there were three governors who rejected Nehemiah, and they gave them, their names were Sambalot, Tobiah, and the other one was Gershom. And what they did is they tried to get Nehemiah not to enter, but because Nehemiah's official letters were there, and he also had the military escort from the king of Persia, it overshadowed these three governors. So Nehemiah was let into the city. Thus begins our lesson. Don't forget that our lesson is definitely with three points that we want to bring forth. Three points. What did Nehemiah do when he got into Jerusalem? Well, first thing, he surveyed the, the situation. That's verses 11 through 15 that we had just read. Then he caused the people to go to work. That's verses 16 and 18. And then he had some opposition, so he responds to opposition. So let's look at verses 11 through 15. We just read about it. Nehemiah decided when he got there to inspect the walls secretly at night before discussing the matter with the other Jews. He took along a few servants with him for the inspection. So Nehemiah went to the valley gates. He went to the dung gates. He went to the fountain. He just went all around. He even got to the king's what? Pool. This is to me like going north, south, west, east, surveying the damage. And when he returned before daylight, the, he was very, very upset. The nighttime would avoid interference by hostile officials. And we can learn, of course, from this that if you want to survey, situ if you want to help with the situation, then you ought to survey it. You ought to get some information about it. And that's what he did in order to help the people. So after he came back, verses 11 through, no, verses 16 through 18, he called the people to work. When he got back, he called them together and he said to them, Jerusalem is a mess. Everything is in ruin. We must rebuild the city wall and take pride in our city. Jerusalem is a what? A mess. It's all torn down. Nearby told them that don't worry, don't get upset because I have two guarantees for you. Number one, God will guide us through these efforts. Just look at what God had already done. He had shown favor upon Nehemiah by allowing him to come there. And the next thing he said, since the king of Persia had given Nehemiah permission to come and back the project, don't worry, don't worry, it's gonna work. Immediately, the scripture says, the people said, let us start building right now. So they got up and they collected things. And of course, they began the project. This project of rebuilding was challenged and inspired by Nehemiah. But it's God's what? Strength that gave him, that he that gave him so that he could complete the work. In other words, the way I see it, this was a spirit-led project under the spiritual guidance by God, so it's guaranteed for success. Well, what happened right after that, there was some opposition. 
So verses 19 through 20 tells us what happened and how these same three governors that we mentioned before. So this is the third part of the lesson. Respond to opposition of rebuilding the city. In verses 19 and 20, this is what happened. When Sanballat, Tobiah, Gisham heard about Nehemiah's plan, they started insulting us and saying, just look at you. Do you plan to rebuild the walls of the city and rebel against the king? Everything they were saying was false. Nehemiah had an answer for them. And this is what Nehemiah said, verse 20. We are servants of the God who rules from heaven and he will make our work succeed. So we'll start building Jerusalem, no matter what you say. In fact, he says, you have no right to any of this property because you have no part in its history. When these three men saw the popular support that Nehemiah received from the people, they became angry, but there's more to this. They inferred that Nehemiah plotted rebellion against the king of Persia, all not true. These three men were really looking out for themselves. They were what we call political leaders looking out for themselves. They were from the Persian provinces surrounding Judah. And listen to this. If Jerusalem became strong and a well-defended city, the trade route, route, route would shift in the favor of Jerusalem. This would be a disadvantage to them. So you see why they oppose. What I learned from this lesson is how Nehemiah handled this opposition. It will help me and it will help you to handle opposition. Make sure that you own a mission for God and make sure you have his guidance. You listen to him as you plan your project with God. Now, those are the basic things that we should learn from those three things and uh, three things and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a few moments and quickly summarize. What I learned also is as you continue to read the remaining chapters of the book of Nehemiah, you will find that the wall were completed, the city was rebuilt, a census was taken, and there was a confession and a dedication for service. And that Nehemiah stayed there for 12 years during his first administration, and he was a governor. The time came, however, for him to return to Persia, to the king. And so he's, he, what he did, he so graciously granted his leave, because since the king had granted him leave, he still had to go back. Now, we don't know how long Nehemiah remained it in Persia before he returned back to Jerusalem, and he did this during that second, third wave of Jews going back to Babylon. He became, the, in the second general uh, administration, he became the governor of Jerusalem. He made many more reforms. He guided the people back to the Sabbath days and the practices. But what we really want to remember from today's lesson, that it shows us how God could take a cupbearer to the king of the Persian government, direct him in reforming this city, and he guided them. And this is what I learned about reforming things. I learned that if you, if you are in the business of doing better, you're gonna to have to reform your life, if you're in the business of helping your family, you're gonna to have to reform your family and then you have to reform your community. But what you have to do are these three things that Nehemiah did. You have to survey the situation. You have to look at your life. 
You have to look at your family and your community. Then you're going to have to call the people to help work on this reformation. But most important, you have to have God's guidance. God is the one that can make you go through this reformation. And how do you handle? You have to handle opposition with God's direction. Hopefully this lesson has meant something to you. And if you are not a Christian and you do desire to become one, then it's just as easy as it's stated in Romans 10, 9, and 10. The ABC of salvation. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Just say, I accept Jesus as my Savior. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I confess my sins to God. That's it. You will be saved. I would hope that you will find yourself a scriptural teaching church. Grow in your faith. And if you desire, you can contact First Baptist Church Denby in Newport News, Virginia. 757-877-5808. God bless you. Let's have prayer. Father God, we hope that someone has gained something from this lesson. We pray that God will continue to guide us in this Christian walk. And if God willing, we will be together next time. God bless you. Amen.